Shalom and good morning ICT family. Good morning from wherever you're tuning in from. Um, uh, if, you, if you see someone that's not logged in yet, I ask you to message them or give them a call and encourage them to come on board and, and fellowship with us this morning. Uh, on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Moses, and uh, the rest of the pastors and the, uh, and the leadership, I'd like to take this time to welcome you all to another morning of fellowship, to another morning of worship, to another morning of listening to God's Word. You know, God's Word says that uh, we will not live on bread alone. And so we cannot depend on materialistic blessings. We cannot uh, depend on material, like uh, actual or physical food. But we also live also on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So this morning, come anticipating. Wake up the family, yes. Uh, grab a cup of coffee. And if you're on the road, yes, and you're tuning in from the road, good morning to you. Safe trip on the road. And I hope that you will worship with us as you, as you travel or worship with us as you're sitting in the comfort of your home. And we will worship together, come before God and anticipate the word that he has for us this morning. So this morning, let's go in and let's worship God. Good morning, ICT family. I hope you're excited this morning. Come on, if you need a fresh touch this morning, just receive from him. Thank you, Jesus. Touch us fresh once again. You are here as we lift you up. You were riding on our praise. Be enthroned over everything. You are seated in our praise. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. change the atmosphere with hearts open now everybody sing it out oh, oh, oh. turn it up, it up. this sound of praise make it louder, make it louder. come on just give him a shout of praise lift him up and shout his name over Yeah. 
be in this moment in his presence God wants to touch you once again father thank you God I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do. I just want you. Come on, just see it with me. I'm caught up in the presence. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Jesus, and I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Come on, let's just let this be a song this morning. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sing. Here at your feet, I'm caught up in this holy moment with you. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings, Jesus. Jesus. You don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Oh, and I'm sorry when I've just gone. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Here I am, Jesus, and I'm sorry 
When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Good morning, ICT family. Good morning, friends. Uh, for those who have been uh, tuning into our live stream throughout the whole year, I'd like to welcome you again this Sunday morning. For those who are tuning in for the first time, I'd like to take this time to welcome you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm sure you've been blessed uh, by the worship we've had this morning. And I hope that we will continue to listen in and, and engage the word that God has for us today. Uh, he has fresh manna for us to uh, feed on this morning. And I pray that we will take the time, uh, we will lock in and be blessed by the word uh, that he has prepared for us this morning. So wherever you are this morning, I'll ask if you could bow your heads and let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We are grateful, O oh God, that we can wake up to a new day. And this morning, as we, as we embrace your mercy for us today, your grace, your loving kindness, we also embrace uh, the instructions, the truths that you have for us today. You know what's ahead of us. You know what we are going through. And your word says, O oh Father, that men will not live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. So this morning, Lord, we position ourselves to listen in, and I pray, O oh God, that our minds, our hearts, our emotions, our life will embrace your word this morning, and that we will be nourished, O oh Father, we will be well instructed, that we will be refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord, this morning. For anyone that is going through any struggles this morning, I pray, O oh God, that their spirits will be quieted this morning, and I pray, O oh God, that as we hear from your word, that we will be empowered, we will be refreshed, and we'll be looking forward, O oh Father, to the upcoming days, for the upcoming weeks. There's a song, O oh Father, that we usually sing, Because you live, we can face tomorrow. And so today, O oh God, we position ourselves to hear from you. I thank you for all those who are tuning in this morning, for every mom, every dad, every child, O oh Father, for anyone that is um, tuning in, Lord, from overseas, we pray for them as well this morning. We thank you for bringing us together. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So this morning I'd like to encourage us um, uh, with a word that focuses on the benefits of waiting on God. This idea of waiting on God. 
And I pray that as we go through a story from the Old Testament today, um, I pray that uh, our, um, our view of this, of, of this phrase, waiting on God, will be deepened. And so I'd like to invite us this morning to, if you have your Bibles with you, if you have your phone app, if you can open up to Isaiah 36. Isaiah 36. And if you have found it this morning, just give uh, a thumbs up or a wave to know that we are on this reading journey this morning together. If you haven't said good morning to anyone on the forum this morning, please go ahead and say good morning. Yes. Isaiah 36. And so in Isaiah 36, I would like to paraphrase, paraphrase a few, the beginning of the story, and then we'll go into uh, reading some parts of it as well. So if I could give a little bit of background to this story. So the nation of Israel has divided into two kingdoms. You have the northern kingdom of Israel, and then you have the southern kingdom of Judah. And at this time, at this, uh, at this moment, at, at the story that we're going to focus on, uh, the king of Judah, the southern kingdom, is King Hezekiah. And at this moment also, uh, the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, has been vanquished. They have been overthrown um, by the emperor of Syria, by the king of Syria. And then this same king has now come down towards the south and has uh, overthrown all the fortified cities of Judah and is now coming towards Jerusalem, where King Hezekiah resides. And so, one of the fortified cities in Judah, which is called uh, Lakshish, um, has been overthrown, and the emperor or, or the king of Assyria has sent forth his high servant. In some of our Bibles, you will notice that uh, the word for high servant is replaced with this word Rab Shaker. And in the Assyrian culture, the Rab Shaker was the high official next to the, the Syrian, uh, Assyrian emperor. And so it is this high official that has been sent forth from an overthrown fortified city of Judah to the capital city of Judah, where King Hezekiah resides. And so when the Rab Shaker or the high servant comes to um, the highway, close to the city of Jerusalem, he strategically positions himself at the place or at the aqueduct. It's called the aqueduct. It's the, it's the, um, it is the sort of like the system of water that supplies the city of Jerusalem. So he positions himself um, at that aqueduct and then he begins, um, he begins to relay the message of his king. And so three representatives from, uh, from Jerusalem, they come out of the city gates to meet uh, the high servant. And so we will begin reading um, from verse 4. Um, I, I will pick out a few points. In verse 4, you will notice when you do go through the story, you'll find that the first thing that this high servant attacks when he is meeting with these three representatives is their confidence. And so if you go with me to, if you go with me to uh, verse 4 of Isaiah 36. If you go to verse 4 of Isaiah 36, you will find them having this conversation between um, the high servant and the three representatives from Jerusalem. And this is what it reads. So in verse 4, the field commander said to them, Tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria says, On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have counsel and might for war, but you speak only empty words. So here, our friends, this morning, when we look back, in, uh, uh, when we look back at this story, we see that uh, this high servant is now the first thing he attacks when he's approaching the people of Judah, uh, the people of Judah, he says, uh, tell your king, my king said, what are you basing your confidence on? You are, you are, you are you, you're saying that you have counsel, you, you, you say you have might for war, but those are empty words. So that's the first thing um, that this high commander confronts. 
And as we continue into our reading this morning, when we go into verse 5, we see that the second thing that the commander attacks is their planning. First their confidence and now their planning. In verse 5, um, like we already read, you say you have counsel and might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you rebel against me? And so here you see that um, the commander is, um, is, um, is demeaning. He's demeaning and he's, in, and he's trying to strangle them from making any plans of standing against uh, the Assyrian Empire. And so we move on. We move on to verse 6, 8, and 9. And verse 6, 8, and 9 is, is, is quite interesting because here the high servant is now beginning to confront, um, is trying to um, overwhelm, overwhelm King Hezekiah and the people of Judah and is trying to inhibit any formation of any alliance with the Egyptians. And he does it with sarcasm. And not only that, um, the high servant also uses facts. So as he is confronting these three representatives, he's, 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 uh, he's trying to stop any formation of any alliance between the people of Jerusalem, between the city of Jerusalem and Egypt. And he's doing it with sarcasm and he also uses some facts. So let's look into it. So as you look into uh, verse 6, this is what he says. Look. I know you are depending on Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff, which pierces the hand of anyone who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who depend on him. So here you see how you see how uh, th this high servant is telling these three representatives, you can't depend on the Pharaoh of Egypt. He is like a splintered reed. If you lean on him, he will pierce your hand. And so now he is even bad-mouthing the alliance that uh, King Hezekiah is uh, intending to engage. And then he goes on to say, But if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God. And then we move on from there. Let's go to verse 8 and 9. Let's go to verse 8 and 9. And this is where the sarcasm comes in. He says, Come now. Make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you can put riders on them. How then can you repulse one officer of the list of the, my master's officials, even though you are depending on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Yes. So I, I hope you noticed what the, the high official did there. He said, "If I give you uh, two thousand, uh, if I give you two thousand horses, yes, would you be able to put two thousand riders on them? Yes, because he, the this this high official knew that the the city of Jerusalem, its inhabitants, its military, did not have the capability, did not have the military strength to stand against uh, the empire of Assyria. So moving on, moving on." Another thing that, uh, um, that this high servant uses to confront, um, uh, confront the representatives of Jerusalem is when he comes to them, he discourages any hope in God. He discourages any hope or trust in God. And so let's read verse 10. In verse 10 we read, Furthermore, Furthermore, I have come to attack and destroy this land. The Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it. Yes. And so now he is even confronting any hope that King Hezekiah or any of his representatives or the people of Jerusalem would have in God. So he's telling them, don't even depend on your God because he's the one who told me to come and destroy this place and destroy this land. And I'll just put a short note there for you to understand that statement. You'll have to read uh, the earlier chapters of Isaiah. But we'll continue with this today. Moving on to verse um, to the, the next thing uh, in how the how these high servant uh, confronts 
um, um, King Hezekiah. In verse 11, this is what it reads. Now these are the names of the representatives. Then Eliakim, Shebna and Joah said to the field commander, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we can understand it. Don't speak in Hebrew in the hearing of the people who are living along the walls. Yes, along the walls of Jerusalem. So that was their plea. Please speak in, in uh, Aramaic because we understand. But don't speak in Hebrew because the people who live within our walls will hear you. Now look at the response of the commander. In verse 12, the commander says, Was it only to your master and you that my master sent me to say these things and not to the people sitting on the wall who like you will have to eat their own excrement and drink their own urine. So this high servant is coming and he is confronting. He is confronting the people who are living in Jerusalem within the walls of Jerusalem. He is confronting the king Hezekiah. And he is saying, I am not only coming to speak to your, your king and to you representatives. I am here to speak to all of you who live here in Jerusalem. That you will eat your own excrement and you will drink your own urine. And you know, brothers and sisters, he is not making empty threats here. Because the place, if you go back to the beginning of this story, he has positioned himself at the place where the, where the, the source of water feeds the city of Jerusalem. So he's not making an empty threat. So the enemy here is very strategic. Moving on to just noticing a few other things that the, that, the, that the enemy, that this high official does to confront the people of Jerusalem. In verse 13 and 14, this high official begins to attack leadership. Let's read how he says it. In verse 13 and 14, this is, what, uh, this is how it reads. Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord. When he says, the Lord will surely deliver us, this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Just the beginning of verse 16, he says again, do not listen to Hezekiah. So here another tactic that this commander uses against the people of Jerusalem is no confidence in their leadership. He is telling them, don't trust in Hezekiah. Don't, don't be persuaded when he says, trust in God. This is what, uh, another thing that the commander uses to confront other people in Jerusalem. Moving forward. In verse 16, this is an interesting one. In verse 16, the commander goes on to say, Do not listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat fruit from your own vine and fig tree and drink water from your own cistern. Yes? So one thing that the commander is saying is that my king is promising you that you will be able to eat and drink from what is already yours. That is what the, the, the best offer from the enemy. Yes. He's telling the people of Jerusalem, make peace with me. Yes. And I will allow you to eat from your own trees and drink from your own cisterns. And this is another part of the promise that he makes in verse 17. Until I come and take you to a land like your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. So it sounds very, it sounds very green. It sounds very promising. But really what he's promising is displacement. I will give you what is yours and I will displace you to another place that has all these other things. So that is the promise of the king of Assyria. Just before we move on, and as we see, uh, as, we, as we go into uh, Ezekiel 37 and see how King Hezekiah responds to the enemy, another point I'd like to make is, 
when king has a, when when all of this is going on we have to we have to, we need to understand this morning that that uh, this commander has left one of the destroyed cities of Judah and has come to Jerusalem and they have uh, come with a, he has come with a great army he has come with a great army and the fact that they have reached Jerusalem that already showed that the enemy has already had success they have destroyed all the other fortified cities of Judah and now that they are at the gates of Jerusalem that for them who are living in the city is that our fortified, our fortified cities have been overthrown our enemy is right outside our gate yeah so let's move on to verse 37 and we'll pick and let's see how King Hezekiah responds in Isaiah 37 verses 1 and 2 this is what it reads when Hezekiah heard this he tore his clothes he put on sackcloth and he went into the house of the Lord he sent Eliakim Shebna and he sent them to Isaiah the prophet yes he sent them to Isaiah the prophet so that's the first thing King Hezekiah did as soon as he heard the news he humbled himself he tore his clothes he tore his clothes and he went into the temple of the Lord that was his first reaction and not only did he do that he sent word he said I'm sending you go and and inform Isaiah the prophet go in and inform Isaiah the prophet now let's see because of this action how did the Lord reply let's go to verse 6 and 7 of chapter 37 and this is what it says the Lord replied to Isaiah and then Isaiah said thus says the Lord do not be afraid of the words which you have heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me surely I will send a spirit upon him and he shall hear a rumor and return to his land and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land so that's how God responds moving on in verse 10 of chapter 37 there's a new threat from uh, from uh, the king uh, king of Assyria so this is what the king of Assyria uh, sent another message to King Hezekiah do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria yes that's the new threat that comes in do not depend on your God what was King Hezekiah's reaction we'll read it in verse 14 and 15 and, and I would like to encourage you, brothers and sisters, go and read that new threat. It is a long one. It is a bold threat. And it is like, a, uh, like the king of Assyria was like putting it all in God's face. He was putting it all in God's face. So let's go to verse 14 and 15. And this is how Hezekiah responded to that letter. When Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it, Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord and then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord so he took this letter he read it he took it before the Lord and he spread it before the Lord in verses 21 and 22 we see how the Lord responds let's read it together and this is what it says in verse 21 and 22 thus says the Lord the God of Israel because you have prayed to me because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, this is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. Yes, and I encourage you to go and read all the verses that follow. The words that God spoke to Hezekiah against his enemy. Now let's go to verse 36 and 38 and now we're coming towards the end of the story. This is when the Lord, everything that he said to Hezekiah, what he would do, this is when God begins to put it into action. And so we start reading from verse 36. Then the angel of the Lord, then the angel of the Lord went out into the camp of the Assyrians, went into the camp of the Assyrians and killed 
185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were corpses, all dead. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, departed and went away and returned home and remained at Nineveh. Now it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of his God, when the king of Assyria, after all his army had been executed by the angel of the Lord, and when he had returned to Nineveh, his home, and he was worshipping in the house of his God, the name of his God is Nisroch. And as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his God, then his sons, Adramelech and Shereza, struck him down with a sword. I wonder if you would remember the word of the Lord earlier on. The first time King Hezekiah heard the news and went to the Lord. The Lord said exactly, exactly what he just did. He told King Hezekiah, because you have prayed to me concerning, concerning the king of uh, Assyria, I will make a spirit come upon him. I will make him hear a rumor and he will go back the way he came to his home. And there he will be killed by, uh, by his own sword in his own land. Yes. And so there's a few takeaways that we can take from the word of God this morning as we focus on the thought of the importance of waiting on God. Whatever threats the enemy may throw at you, may throw at your family, I would like to encourage you this morning, bring it before the Lord. Bring it before the Lord. Whatever it is, whatever threat, whatever troubles you may uh, be thinking of and overwhelmed by, bring it before the Lord, just like how King Hezekiah did. Whatever advances the enemy has made against you, whether it comes in a form of a disease, whether it comes in the form of financial uh, debts, whatever troubles you or worries you, that has a threat against your family and, and they have been, may have been some successes against you or against your family. Just like how the king of Assyria and his empire were, having a, were, were enjoying a, a certain uh, success against the people of Judah. They had destroyed few fortified cities. But because the king Hezekiah took it before the Lord, brought it before the Lord, the Lord intervened. And so your takeaway this morning is you don't have to allow yourself to be overwhelmed. You don't have to go through uh, uh, that overwhelming journey on your own. You can bring it before the Lord and trust that this God will not only give you a word when you need it, but he will also act upon it. He will also act upon it. Another takeaway that uh, this morning is that don't allow the enemy to take away your trust in the Lord. Don't let the enemy to take your hope away from the Lord. So the king Hezekiah, he had many factual reasons why he should not have, why he should lose his hope in God. He had many reasons. All the fortified cities of Judah was destroyed. The northern kingdom of Israel was taken into exile. He did not have the fighting capability. And the king of Assyria knew that. Remember, the first thing that the king of Assyria came against was, who are you basing this confidence for you to stand against me? And so I would like to encourage you this morning, when we hope in God, when we continue to trust in him, irrespective of the facts that are against us or that are before us, when we continue to hope in the Lord, when we continue to be resilient, in our hope in the Lord. The Lord will surely come through for us in His way. Another takeaway uh, this morning is, I would like to encourage us to, to be vessels of God's glory. To be vessels of God's glory. What do I mean by that? King Hezekiah was able, in his, because of his resilience, because he hoped in God and he trusted in God. And how did he carry out that hope? How did he, how did he manifest that trust? 
he humbled himself. Yes? He, he tore his clothes and he went to the Lord. You know, he went to the Lord. And said, Lord, I'm depending on you. I'm trusting in you. Yes? I'm trusting in you. And even in that time of desperation, what, what, does, what does King Hezekiah do? And this is another takeaway. He sends word to the prophet Isaiah to also pray and intercede on his behalf and on the behalf of the, of the city of Jerusalem. And so that's another thing I'd like to encourage us this morning is don't do your journey alone. Call another brother, call another sister. Let them know what you're going through or how they can pray with you. That's why we have this community. Yes. And you know, for, the, for viewers who are watching in here this morning, you know, if you, don't have, if you don't have certain friends, if you don't have another brother, you don't have another sister that you can call, please message us, contact us. We have a, a group of brothers and sisters who pray every morning, every morning at 5.30. And you are most welcome to join us. Or you are most welcome to let us know what your, what your prayer request is and we will stand with you in prayer. So just like King Hezekiah did, he not only went on his own before the Lord, but he asked another brother, tell the prophet Isaiah to also pray for us. And that friend was a dependable friend, someone who was able to hear from God as well, and who was able to relay what God was, was saying. And so we need trustworthy friends like that during these times. So with that being shared, I would like to read um, one particular verse that we have always heard. But I pray that this morning, when I read it, we will have a new revelation of what uh, this verse is teaching us. And that is from Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. And I will read. This is what it says. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord... The creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this morning, families that are tuning in, individuals that are tuning in, my brother, my sister, or a young teenager, you might be tuning in this morning. I would like to encourage you. Wait eagerly on the Lord. Wait hopefully in the Lord. Wait prayerfully before the Lord. And stay there and, and depend on Him. That whatever it is that you are currently going through or that you will be going through in the future, that the Lord will show you his salvation. And then when the Lord shows you his salvation, when he comes through for you, I believe just like the people of Jerusalem, when they celebrated and they realized, wow, because our leader depended on God, see what the Lord has done. And that's how King Hezekiah became a vessel of God's glory. And I pray for those of us who are leaning in, uh, listening in this morning, that we will, we will come before the Lord this morning and we'll tell the Lord, Lord, I want to trust in you like I never have before. My level of trust, I want to increase it. I want to depend on you like never before. And I pray, Lord, that your glory will manifest in me and through me. That I will be a vessel of hope to my family. A vessel of hope to those who I work with. Amen. So this morning, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Amen. And let's go before the Lord this morning and let's wait on him this morning. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, the giver of strength, the giver of hope, the God that refreshes us in the time, O oh God, when we need you. I pray, O oh God, this morning for everyone that is listening in. I do not know, O oh God, what everyone is going through. But you are the God, O oh Father, whose understanding is great. And you know everyone, O oh God, that is listening in this morning. And those who will be tuning in later. And Father, we come before you this morning believing, O oh Lord, that as we have heard your word this morning and as we respond to your word, as we begin to adopt this lifestyle, the lifestyle of waiting on you, the lifestyle of eagerly hoping in you, 
Father, that your glory will begin to manifest in our lives individually. It will manifest, O oh God, in our homes, O oh Father. We will be able to overcome uh, disease. We will be able to overcome death. We will be able, O oh Father, to overcome debt, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. We will be able to overcome uh, um, uh, the separation of relationships, O oh God, that we will be able to mend, O oh Father, these relationships. We will not be insecure, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. All the issues, O oh Father, all the circumstances that your people are going through, Father, we lift up to you, O oh Father, this morning. And as we continue to seek your face throughout the week, throughout the rest of the year, O oh Lord, we look forward, O oh Father, to the testimonies that will come up. We look forward, O oh Father, to seeing your salvation, O oh Father, in our lives. And in this way, and in this way, I pray, O oh God, that your light will shine, O oh Father, will break forth in our communities and people will see the light in our lives and they will want to come and know the King of Israel, the King of Jerusalem, the King of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the King, O oh God, of ICT Suva and those who are listening in this morning. Father, this morning, O oh God, I speak blessings, O oh Father, into every uh, individual, the lives of the families who are tuning in and those who have may not be tuning in this morning. Oh Father, we just pray, oh God, that your blessings, oh Father, over our families, over our nation, over our leaders. And we pray for all these things, oh God. May we continue, oh Father, to find our hope and our trust in you. May we be resilient, oh Father, like never before. I pray all these things, oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, family. God blessing, friends. I pray, oh God, that you'll go with God's blessings. And, and please share. When God breaks through in your life and in your family, please share with us. We'd like to hear and celebrate with you. God bless you. Have a blessed week.